Hi guys, my name's Eddie Johnson. I'm here to uh, tell you all about AppFlow today, uh, which is one of AV's newest products. Now, to tell you about AppFlow, we first of all need to tell you about the challenges that people are gonna face when they start using smart pause devices. And when I say a smart pause device, I mean one of the new breed of devices running Android rather than just being a payment device. What AppFlow is, is an orchestration layer that allows apps to talk to apps really seamlessly on these devices. It allows us to craft a really nice checkout experience. Now, why is that necessary? Well, that's necessary because right now, today, with an Android device, you've got two options. You either have what I call the old world, which is crazy seeing as these are new devices, but in the old world, you have to have lots of different apps integrated directly together. And that means normally you have a point of sale app sitting in the middle and you have lots of other app developers all having to talk to the point of sale app developer and they do direct integrations. And each one of those direct integrations is unregulated. No one knows really what's going on. Oftentimes they're not even done on the device. Sometimes they're done off the device. So those direct integrations can work really well, but they take a lot of time. They take a lot of effort. And most importantly, they're very, very inflexible. Once they're done, once that star of applications is integrated, it's probably not gonna change for a long time. The alternative there is you have what I call the bad world, which is unintegrated applications. So you have lots of applications on the device, none of them are talking to each other. When you open up two different apps, you might have to enter your email address in twice. That sort of thing just isn't gonna fly in a merchant environment. Customers aren't gonna be happy, merchants aren't gonna be happy, and ultimately, the devices aren't really gonna work for anybody. So in either of these situations, you can see that the real value out of these smart devices is not being pushed forwards. Also, with a merchant, with an acquirer, with a, you know, the people that are, that, are, that are pushing these devices out, if they have to go through all of the effort to directly integrate these applications, then they have no flexibility. They're gonna use the same applications for every merchant vertical with no differentiation for those verticals to really give those value adds. So what have we done? What we've done is we've come up with a thing called AppFlow. And AppFlow really blows apart all of those direct integrations. And it says, no, apps don't integrate with apps anymore. Apps integrate with AppFlow. And because of that, the point of sale app becomes, instead of being the center of that star, becomes what we call the payment initiator. It just says, I want to make a transaction now. I want to start a flow. Once the flow is started, it gets taken over by a thing called the flow processing service. That's AV's service, which manages everything that's going on on the device then each application on the device can talk to the flow processing service using an open set of APIs called the AV AppFlow APIs. What that means is that all of a sudden, all of the applications on this device are speaking the same language. They're all talking through the same APIs to the same piece of equipment. And essentially, what that means is that all of a sudden, any app can talk to any app. That means if you want to use POS app A with loyalty app C, or POS app B with warranty and, and financing app F, absolutely no problem. So all of a sudden, the acquirers, instead of having these little stars of integrated applications, have a big pool of applications to choose from for their merchant verticals. So they can say, okay, we're getting a new merchant vertical, maybe they're cafes, we need this POS app, we need this loyalty app, and we need this tipping app, and we can put them all together into a flow. Now, obviously, it's called app flow, and I've mentioned flows a couple of times. Essentially, what we mean by a flow is when that transaction is started, when that process is started, we can go through any number of stages and we can launch new applications in each of those stages. So here's an example of a, a sale flow. When a POS app or a, you know, any sort of application starts the flow, and it can be any application that starts a flow, instead of going straight to the payment app to ask for payment, we go through three stages, pre-flow, split, and pre-transaction. Pre-flow just allows any other application to come in and do what a POS app would normally do. And the power of that means that the point of sale, the first app that launches the flow, doesn't have to be a traditional POS. It could be a, a calendar application, for example. We then go through split. That allows us to split the bill between multiple people in the transaction. Pre-transaction, another application can launch here, maybe a newsletter sign up or a loyalty application. And all of that happens before the payment app is called. When the payment app is called, we ask you to tap your card or insert your card. And then we have a very special stage called post card reading where the payment app supports it. This allows another app to pop up, 
use a token of the card information to identify the customer. So all of a sudden with AppFlow, we've got rid of loyalty cards because you can use your credit or debit card as your loyalty card in the store. So a loyalty app could pop up in the post card reading. It then goes back to the payment app to process the transaction. After that happens, we have a space for another app to come up post transaction. And you can see this dotted line here because if the transaction's not finished, it goes back up to our split application for the next customer. And then right at the end, when every customer's, uh, when every part of the transaction's been fulfilled, we have a stage called post flow. And again, that just allows a final application, maybe a ratings application or a, a data collection application. Now, a couple of important things about flow apps. First of all, they can appear in as many of these stages as they want to. And secondly, they don't necessarily need to have a UI. So they could pop up, they could collect some data and they can pass on to the next uh, stage of the flow. So it's all well and good me talking about it, but what does it actually look like in action? So if I just jump over to my device here, and you can see I'm, I've got my device here, I'm mirroring the screen up here. And actually this is a really interesting view because this is a good example of what the old world might look like on an Android device. You've got lots of applications, none of the applications have necessarily got priority. It's quite confusing for a merchant, it takes training to use. You can see one of the apps I've got here is a demo config. And what this allows me to do is push different configurations to this device. So I can say, hey, now this device is going to be set up for a coffee shop. And as soon as I do that, you can see what happens is we just tidy up that home screen and we say, guys, you don't need to worry about all of the applications that are on this device. The one that you need to interact with, and we're all about points of interaction here, the one that you need to interact with is the POS app. So I open my POS app and then I can start a transaction in just the same way as I always would. This is our demo POS app. It allows me to do things like select a customer, for example, and start a transaction. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit pay. Now, instead of going straight to the payment app, what you'll see is a little black screen comes up that says processing transaction. That's where the flow processing service takes over the transaction and passes from app to app. And as you can see here, we've gone straight into a loyalty app. So it's recognized me because I selected my customer in the POS app and it said, hey, you've got some points to spend. Do I want to use them or do I want to skip? I'm going to skip for now. And then it's going to go to my payment application. And as you can see on the device, it's asking me to present my card. So I'll present my card. It will process the transaction and it will move me through onto the next stage. Now, instead, again, instead of going straight back to the POS app, it's gone back to the loyalty app. So again, showing that these apps can appear in multiple stages. Oop. So it's allowing me now to collect new points on my transaction. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to, again, go back to that black screen. It's going to take me to another Flow app, which is my receipt application. And this is a combined receipt application. This allows one receipt for the whole transaction. As you can see, my loyalty has added some information to the combined receipt. So no longer is there multiple receipts per transaction, one from the payment app, one from the POS app. It's a combined receipt. We'll hit finish, and that will take me back to my point of sale application. So that's just one example of where we've got a POS app and a loyalty app in a Flow together. If I come back to my config and I go to my restaurant scenario, you can see we've reconfigured the home screen, set it up for a restaurant. I'm going to open my point of sale application. I'm going to do a very simple transaction, add some beers to my basket. This time I'm going to decide to split the transaction between multiple customers. If I hit pay, you'll see that we go to our split application. Our split application allows two or more customers to be part of that transaction. Again, all of this is happening outside the point of sale application. First customer decides to pay by card. We then have a flow app that allows us to add a tip. Really important because it means that the point of sale application doesn't have to do everything. We can have flow apps that pick up pieces of functionality here and there and add them to the correct verticals where they're necessary. For example, if you had maybe tax in, in, in a country and the POS app wasn't set up to, you, to, to utilize the tax rules of that company, we could have a flow app that allows you to do just the tax. So I'm going to add a tip to my part of the transaction. I'm feeling generous. I'll add a 20% tip. I'll pay by card. Again, just tap my card. It will then move on to the next part of the flow. And the next part of this particular flow is a, uh, I have my, uh, my receipt. And then I have my ratings application. Really, really good example of where AppFlow can be very powerful because traditionally to get a ratings application to appear at the right time after the payments happened, could be multiple thousands of pounds worth of integration or multiple thousands of euros worth of integration. With AppFlow, it's really easy. So I'm going to hit my feedback, but because AppFlow knows the transaction isn't finished, it's taken me back to that split stage. 
So I'm the second customer now, I'll hit pay by card. And because every flow app uh, that happens between uh, the split stage and the post transaction stage happens per customer, I'm the second customer, I get to add my own tip. So I'll hit a 20% tip, I hit okay, I'll pay with my card. And again, because of that split stage, because of the way uh, each customer gets to do their own flow apps, you'll see that I get my own receipt for this part of the transaction, and then I get to leave my own rating. So the power of AppFlow is that it gives these merchants a really smooth checkout experience, okay? It gives a really, really smooth checkout experience to the merchants. But more importantly than that, it gives a very, very large amount of flexibility to the acquirers. As you can see here on this, uh, this setup stage, I can put any of these apps with any other of these apps. It's all well and good showing you predefined demos, but if I decide that I want the loyalty application and the tipping application enabled, I can do that. Now, we don't see the merchants doing this, configuring this on their own devices. We see the acquirers being able to build these bundles of applications and push them down to the right merchant verticals at the right time. So it gives those acquirers a huge amount more flexibility to be able to do the right things for their merchants. So why is AppFlow good? AppFlow gives choice and flexibility. It allows you to mix and match the value added apps based on your merchant verticals, based on the business needs of your merchants. It gets you away from that situation where you're tied into having to use the same set of apps every time because they're the ones that work together. It gives a better consu a consumer experience. It gives the merchants a better experience of their device. It gives the customers a better experience in the merchant. It allows the apps to work seamlessly together. That's really important for the app developers. How many times we speak to app developers and they say the biggest challenge is making sure our app works with all the right POS apps at all the right times to make ourselves relevant. Again, with AppFlow, one more integration and they're done. The merchant-friendly interface and that no need for uh, lengthy and cost-intense integrations, really important for our acquirers. Every time we speak to them, they say these smart devices are really good, but the apps are very, very hard. We're solving all of those issues. If you want any more information about AppFlow, talk to one of the AV representatives on our stand or head off to developer.av.com where you can find out a huge amount more information. Thank you very much for listening.